Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So some of you have been asking about my filmmaking journey and what really drove me to becoming a filmmaker. And I know I've spoken a little bit about it, uh, but today I'm gonna get further on on why I decided to leave law school and become a full-time filmmaker. So why don't we get to it? So right after I graduated from law school, again, I started um, trying to find films, trying to, trying to educate myself. And in the process, I started, I, I started to want to make short films. And I did. I made one short film. And then once I made that short film, it didn't really go anywhere. It, it did go to a couple festivals, maybe around 20 festivals. But that was it. It didn't really go anywhere. And it didn't really put me in a place where I could say, this is what I want to do. This is, what I, this, is, this is the work that I aspire to do. And this is who I am. So I became really obsessed with wanting to make films. And I just didn't know how or where to start. And in the process, I started to meet a lot of filmmakers. Um, I would tell them about my aspirations and I would tell them about my ambitions. And, and it, it always came down to the same thing. Um, you didn't go to film school. You don't have film experience. Uh, we don't know who you are. You don't even know how to write a script. Uh, you don't know about cameras or lenses or anything like that. It, it became a really dark time in my life to the point where I had a failed suicide attempt in late 2015. I'm a, I'm a huge mental health advocate and I'm also a huge uh, supporter for anything and anyone that wants to pursue something that makes them happy. Whether you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, uh, a model, or even a stripper, if you have integrity and you want to do that, I support you so long that you know that that's going to make you happy. Uh, but I just don't count those two years because those two years were, uh, I like to equate them as years of self-discovery and years that uh, showed me how to persevere, showed me how to be patient, but most importantly, showed me how to get rid of my obsessions of wanting to do something um, right away. So, you know, aside from being the two darkest years of my life, they also showed me a lot. They showed me how to just listen and they showed me how to learn um, and, and also be opinionated and also just take into other people's perspectives so that I could learn and move forward. But yes, I did have a very uh, unfortunate event in my life in 2015 where um, I, I tried to commit suicide and uh, my family knows this, They're, everyone's aware and um, my closest friends know. And I always speak about it just because it's very important for me that people understand that um, death is not the solution to everything in life. And I do understand that chronic depression can sometimes hit us, but um, thankfully, you know, going back to film, it really saved my life. Towards the end of 2015, when I had to move back home um, to the place where I grew up, I had lost everything. I had lost my car, my apartment, my job, and I had to move back home uh, pretty much under the care of my mother and, you know, my family. One day while I was on Netflix, um, I was I, I came across Tangerine, which some of you guys already know that. So yes, um, hopefully this makes sense now. Black Swan is the reason why I became a filmmaker, but Tangerine is the reason why I decided to go out and do it. So um, if you put two and two together, it might make sense now. I needed to figure out a way to find that aspiration of wanting to live again not to make films but to live again because honestly after what had happened I just didn't want to I didn't want to live I just wanted to sit I just want to sit home and just do nothing I didn't I didn't really aspire to become anyone or to become something my mother and I are very close and I remember her just watching me all the time and just not saying anything but understanding that there was something wrong and and not knowing how to help me she would just stay by my side and just um, you know encourage me to just smile because you know when you smile you trick your brain to believe that you're happy and that helps you and that's one of the biggest lessons that my mother showed me throughout that process some of you that are watching this that know me uh, probably don't know this part of my life and now you're figuring it out and um, and all I ask is that you don't think of me differently uh, and if you do um, that'll be more your problem than mine but I just want you to understand that the reason why I'm speaking about this is because I want people to understand that no matter what you do in life everything has a solution. And that's why I said it on my last video, that idea that we only live once, it's not true. We live every day because we die once. And I feel like I've already faced death in the face and death said, it's not your time, you need to go back because this is your time to me to do something uh, creative and something productive. And I do believe that there was a reason why I'm still here. Right after that happened, again, in, in late 2015, early 2016, I was trying to figure out my groove. I was trying to figure out how to get back to, um, to what I really wanted to do, which is make films. And I came across this amazing, film festival called the Collaboration Filmmakers Challenge. That also saved my life. It's a huge, huge, huge part of, of why I'm a filmmaker today and why I'm a working filmmaker today for that matter. The Collaboration Filmmakers Challenge is a, is a film festival that takes place during, um, I believe, May and June of every year. The way it works is that 
uh, you go, you show up to the kickoff party and they give you a quote and based on that quote, you have to shoot a short film in a period of two weeks. Now, in order for your film to qualify for prices and to screen, you have to help someone in that, in that, ch uh, in that festival and someone else needs to help you. So it's a triangle and um, pretty much it challenged you to collaborate. A lot of people in that festival like to call it a competition. I don't call it a competition because number one, I don't believe in competition. I think that we're all equally very different. Second, um, the word competition is not in that festival. The festival is the Collaboration Filmmakers Challenge. No Knowing about it, finding out about it through a couple friends. It inspired me to go uh, and sign up for the festival and I made a film. I made a film which I will put the link to right here. And that was actually my second short film um, after I had done my first back in 2014. This was pretty much me coming back to the industry. Me trying to prove to myself that I could do this. Deep inside, the only person that I wanted to prove that I could do this was myself. And that was actually the first time that I fully believed in myself. Now, this was around, I believe, May, June. Fast forward to July. And that's when I watched uh, Tangerine again, and and I knew I wanted to to make a feature film. I said to myself, if I was able to make a short film, maybe I can try making a feature film. And um, so I wrote the script for Blind Station, which you guys are uh, familiar with now. I sent it off to Samara Howell and Leo Ramsey, which I actually ended up meeting at the film festival. I still remember the day that I was at the festival and um, I saw Samara Howell's short film and I was really captivated. I was so nervous, but I wanted to go up to her to tell her that I will, you know, I, I wanted to work with her in the future. And I did. Um, and, and this is very important for me to say because I, before this, I was a very shy person. I would never in a million years sit in front of a, a camera or a phone like now and, and, and talk to people or talk about my experiences. Um, I, I, yes, I had studied to become an attorney, but I didn't really have any people skills. <laughs> I, did, I was just very awkward and weird. And sometimes I still am. But, uh, but I feel like I'm more confident now and I can talk to people about my goals and about my aspirations or just go up to somebody and, and start a conversation. So that day, I actually built up the, the courage and I went to talk to Samara and I told her, hey, I really like your short film and I would like to work with you on a feature that I plan to shoot. I did not have a script at, uh, at the time, but I had an idea. And, um, and I went and I told her and she pulled out the program and she had a little star written next to my name. And she goes, that's incredible because I actually wanted to meet you. I really like your film and I want to work with you. Hopefully now you guys understand why I decided to jump into film right away. And, and for those of you that still don't, you know, I'll tell a little bit about why. Right after what happened, um, it took me a while to get to a point where I felt comfortable going out again. After I made that short film, it really changed my perspective. The number one thing that came to my head was, why am I so afraid? Why am I not doing this? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me that I need the right light or the right camera or the right script or the right actors or, or the right amount of money? Why can't I just take my phone out and go out and just shoot something? Whether it's good or not, why can't I just go out and shoot something that's gonna make me happy? And you know, making Blue Line Station was a huge part of my uh, therapeutic process. It really, really helped me heal my wounds and heal my, my, uh, my sorrow, you know, I was grieving. I, I really was grieving. It was a time where I didn't really understand anything and I didn't really want to do anything, as I said before. So I picked up my phone and I went out to get it done just to prove to myself that whether I did a film that was good or bad, what really mattered was getting it done, going after that goal. And I'm so proud that I did. I'm not gonna talk more about the process of Blue Line Station because you guys have already seen that. And if you guys haven't seen it, if this is your first time seeing my videos, you can go to my very first video on how I made my first feature film with $100. And hopefully, uh, with you know, you guys can also understand my point of view of how I made that film with $100 because that's literally all I had to my name. Luckily, I had a car that I had paid off and I used that for transportation throughout the shoot. But other than that, I didn't have anything else. Um, I only had a script, two actors, and my willingness to go out and, and risk it all because at the end, I had nothing to lose. At the end, you know, going through the process of of refining myself and rebuilding my character and rebuilding my life, I was able to find out who I really am. And I was really able to discover that I have more to give than just my life. I mean, I'm here to tell stories. I'm here to help you tell stories. I'm here to encourage you um, while I encourage myself to continue. So I'll say this again, don't stop, don't give up. And if you ever have any concerns or if you ever worried or if you're ever going through a moment um, like the one I went through in 2015, reach out. As someone that's gone through that uh, really dark period in their lives, I want you to know that there is more to, to life than just thinking of it as being over. So go out there, do something, um, inspire yourself, uh, take a picture of a flower, take a picture of yourself, uh, record a video and post it or not. Just do something um, because once you start, I'll guarantee you you're going to get a feeling of never wanting to stop. And I'm going to end it with this. Everyone always asks me what is the hardest or most difficult challenge of starting a film. And to me, it's starting. And I mean starting your career. For me, it was doing that short film, Mastermind. Knowing that I had to break all my fears. Knowing that I had to break away from all, all the... Um, all the criticism, knowing that I had to break away from my own self. Because just like Nina and Black Swan, 
I was stopping myself from, from fulfilling my accomplishments. I was getting too obsessed with uh, wanting positive results. Uh, and, I, and in the process, I forgot about the most important thing, which was my mental health and making sure that in the process, I kept myself happy, healthy, and sane. So with that said, I just want to tell you guys that I love you guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. And never forget this. We don't live one day. We live every day because we die once. And if you get an opportunity to live again, don't take it for granted and just go out and do it.